In this series, I cover a random variety of different games, usually playing games for an hour or two and cutting that down into something more watchable while including a quick review of my thoughts afterwards. With that said, welcome to episode 12 of Games You've Never Heard Of. So here we got a game called Angerfoot. The trailer is what really interested me just because I haven't quite seen anything like it. It does have a decent amount of reviews, but I still think that it's going to end up being a game most people haven't heard of. Oh look, we're buying some new primo sneakers. You're too late. The violent gang cleaned me out of his sneakers. If you want those shoes, you're gonna have to take them down. For a game called Angerfoot, I kind of expected to see my feet, but whatever. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, this is a good game. Stop, bro. Please don't kick me. You can have the sneakers. <laughs> it was kind of interesting. So they had like a cutscene that kind of showed off the lore. Basically, this place sucks and everybody is in a gang. Why is everything kicking? <laughs> oh, you got the last pair of sneakers. I can't wait to see them in the sneaker room with the others. Oh, oh. We got the last set of primos ever. My primos! Angerfoot. These sneakers belong to the violence gang now. Why? <laughs> oh, is this like the world map? Bro, this game's got so much style. It's actually insane. Aha. Beautiful. Oh, they're getting guns too. Yikes. Oh my god, and they kill you really quick. I see, so each gun only has a limited amount of ammo in them. So you can stun them by throwing the gun too. I love the kicking the door into the dude across the hall. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, little skeleton. There we go. Damn, dude. <laughs> oh, this is nice. We got like a uh, area to just chill and not fight. Oh, but I can still kick them though. Ooh. Damn, new enemy type. He's not very good at aiming, though, thankfully. <laughs> oh, you tricked me. I do like how detailed the environment is and how it just lets me kick random people. Oh, my dear God. OK, we got a serious Sam type enemy who kamikazes. That was close. Dude, aside from my frame rate, 4070 Ti, by the way, this is an insanely cool level. Damn it, dude. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn. It. Damn. Ooh. What? Oh my god. What? Toasters. Ow. Dude, boss time. This is gonna suck. <laughs> oh, is that really what they want me to do? That seems so strange. Oh, all right. I mean, clearly he's gotten our phase, right? Whoa. Is that it? Please? Oh no. <laughs> okay. As soon as I start spam kicking, 
it became immediately easier. And I got my Yeezys back. Honestly, it's not a bad game. I don't know if I would recommend it personally though, because the whole idea of just dying in one hit and replaying the level is just not super exciting for me. That said, I can't really knock it or say that this is a bad game per se. It's just not really my thing. It does seem like it's going to be extremely short. I was able to get through the first act in about an hour and with four shoes that we're trying to rescue, I would assume that means we're gonna have four acts. So around four to five hours of gameplay. I also wanted to mention that while I appreciate the art style of the game, I didn't really like the potty mouth humor. Most likely I'll just edit it out of the video, but there was a a lot of swears and a lot of like censored nudity. I'm not like squeamish when it comes to those types of things, but I did feel like this game was kind of gross. So yeah, I won't say it's a bad game. It's actually very, very well done. It's just not for me. So here we got a game called Servo Knots and Bobby and me ended up playing the demo of this one. Skipping right to the review, this game is basically a more complicated, weirder, overcooked. I think that people that enjoy couch co-op party games are going to really, really have a good time with this. But if I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't think that the gameplay was varied enough to keep it exciting for me. Basically, it's all about tubes. Connect the red gas pump to the red car, and sometimes there will be a combination of colors like orange or purple, which require you to connect two gas pump colors to a node that then connects to the car. That is the entirety of the game. It took a while before we ended up finding our groove gameplay wise, but even when we did, we weren't having the best time. I can't really put my finger on it, but this game just wasn't very fun. It's strange because I normally love these types of games, but if I'm being honest, I don't think I would recommend this one. So here's a game called Odinfall. I remember seeing this at Summer Games Fest, and I thought that the pixel graphics was really, really cool. It's also advertised as a rogue light. So for those that don't know, a rogue like is when all of your progress gets reset and you kind of just got to randomly get a good run to beat the game. And a light involves you slowly getting upgrades that make you more powerful. I prefer the latter. There was a demo on Steam and I called my buddy Val and we started playing through it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, I was not expecting this. Oh, you get to choose a level. Oh, press space for your special ability. There's a new gun if you want it. <laughs> right there. Revolver, ah uh, yes. You can shoot walls by the way. Oh yeah? Yeah, there's something that exploded in the wall, so maybe we can use oh, that. Oh, okay, maybe there's like specials. Okay. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> oh my god! Oh god! Ooh. I'm I'm trying to die! Dude. Don't die! Oh! <laughs> oh, it's gonna keep flooding, so we can't go back uh, that way. Oh, right, right, it's a roguelike, so we're stuck with whatever path we take. Okay. Oh, I'm out of ammo! <laughs> you sounded like you too. Let's see what we keep. Is there something that shows what we can upgrade? I think it's a this. Yeah, here? here's our skill tree where, where I'm at. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm stuck with him. <laughs> I'm stuck with him. What the heck is that? Oh my god. Ah! He's so powerful, dude. Oh, there you go. New gun. Give me that. Ooh, laser minigun. Here, blast him, dude. I want a fun gun too now, please. <laughs> I'm bum rushing. Do it. Oh, big boy chest. Ah! It ate me. It was a mimic, dude. Oh, it's a mimic. <laughs> I wonder what the right mouse button does. Probably my ult. Go in the middle of them and do it. I bet you it's gonna kill them all. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just a big fist of death that kills everything, <laughs> including us. <laughs> Oh, come here, you. <laughs> oh, it's that exploding oh God, guy down. again. Oh, no, dude. Oh, he's giving money. He's, it's a loot goblin. Give us money. Uh, help. There's, there's two snipers. <laughs> there's a giant sniper here, dude. <laughs> wow, wow, dude, wow, there's wow, all wow. sorts of weird melee weapons now. Oh, my God. What the heck? <laughs> it's a great oh, axe. Oh, look at that. It's a tier three. Like, it shows the tier of the weapon. Yes. This is cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't really expecting this. Very heavy metal. Oh my dear God. Oh my God, it's Bush. Oh, it was easy. 
<laughs> oh! What's your robots? Retreat! Oh, damn it, I died. There's a health thing right there. Oh. Honestly, this game's pretty good. I can totally see the influence of Enter the Gungeon, and I think I'm gonna keep an eye on this one. The demo alone had enough enemy variety and gameplay to leave a great first impression. We only had two characters, but of course there's going to be more in the full game. And something that probably didn't make it in the video was that the skill tree was completely different based on which character we were playing. My only negative criticism towards this game is it's extremely difficult. Enemies were very spongy, and as a result, we were running out of ammo constantly. Hopefully they can find better balance in the full game, but I'm worried that they have a high difficulty curve at the beginning because it's a rogue light and you're expected to grind it for hours on end getting upgrades that slowly mediate the gameplay. Basically inflating playtime, which is something that I'm not a big fan of. Here we've got a game called Aloft and they recently ended up having a demo, by recently I mean like a month ago, and I recorded it with a friend. We're skipping right to the review portion because frankly speaking there is no content here. We were both genuinely very, very surprised that this demo was even playable when there wasn't really anything to do. Like there was a big island to explore, but there was nothing on it. No enemies, no progressive content at all. I will say that the flying was pretty cool. And the idea of having a open world survival game with a bunch of different floating islands that would scale in difficulty is actually a pretty interesting concept. But if this demo represents the full game in any way, shape or form, I would not recommend it. On top of the lack of content, performance was terrible. I'm not saying that a lot of these issues won't get rectified when the game launches into early access later this year by any means. I'm just stating how confused we were that this demo even exists because it barely shows cases the game. It feels more like an early alpha build. So here we actually have a special one called Mecha Break. And I'm sure that this is not the type of game that belongs in a video like this because of course it's kind of a double A or even triple A game possibly. But if it ain't included in one of these videos, I don't know if I would ever get around to playing it. I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Juarez because he actually gave me an extra beta code that he had. So keep in mind that this is all beta gameplay. This character creator is actually pretty intuitive. There we go. Beautiful. Movement. Feels a bit stiff, but I think that's got to do with the dash ability, which does have a lot of nice impact on it. Whoa. That guy's way bigger than me. In 10 seconds. Oh, wow. That guy looks so cool. Damn. Fluid armor depleted. I'm crashing, bro. Okay, never mind. I'm fine. Dude, I am kicking this guy's butt. Like, he's getting destroyed. I got, like, a javelin spear from Gundam. I can do perfect blocks. Like, get out of here, scumbag. Oh, lordy lord. Man, he's got a lot of health. He's not difficult. Like, he's not damaging me, like, at all. He's got some cool abilities. Oh, that was easy enough. Kind of weird, honestly. I was expecting an armored core level boss or a cool move like that. But I kind of just mashed the attack button and it worked. The cutscenes go a little like they're so shaky. I wish that they weren't because it's actually a really impressive looking fight scene. Really wish this game would stop zooming out of my character's ass. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, is this me actually playing in the round now, I think? Wow, frame rate. Frame rate's going crazy. I don't really know what's going on. At least I killed someone, though. Oh, dude, get destroyed. He's so mad because he was capturing the point. Oh, I think we won, actually. There we go. Now I can actually choose the other mechs. I like playing as a support, but I can't tell what's going on in this game. But the support guy looks really cool, so I'm just going to research him and go for it. So he's got dual wield repair drones, which is just for healing, like straight up. He's got a fart mist that heals teammates as well. Ah, oh, you have to unlock all the different colors for your mech. 
I'm getting so many assists, bro. <laughs> I just keep farting and giving my teammates power while trying to dismantle whatever the heck this is. Let's go. I'm the best mech this game's ever seen. <laughs> oh, I'm locked in here with him. Help me, teammate. Help me, teammate. He's targeting me. I don't even know what's going on. It's so busy, even though I have motion blur completely turned off. <laughs> oh, he's found me again. Every now and then I'm doing pretty good and no one's going for me, but then every out of nowhere, this one guy starts targeting me. But that's OK. I'm too speedy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm just trying to heal this guy out of death. Yes. Fart cloud. Honestly, that was a lot of fun being a healer. Hell yeah, man. I, how many? I got 25 assists and I didn't die once. Let's get it, dude. Oh, I still didn't get MVP for that. I want to see my character's face up there, but I guess MVP is, yeah, it's tied to kills. I'm not going to say no. This is just going to be a maybe for me. Honestly speaking, it reminds me a lot of Exoprimal, which was another kind of team based player versus player game that I really enjoyed the beta. But upon release, I bought it and I rarely played it. I am worried about the longevity of this game. Obviously, when it first comes out, you know, it'll stay around for a while. But does it have long term appeal enough to continue having a player base? I also just wanted to talk about how visually noisy this game is. Most likely I cut it out of the video, but I went through a lot of the graphical settings, tweaking and adjusting things to try and make it more readable. Believe it or not, though, I could actually tell what was going on while I was playing, even though watching the footage back, it doesn't make any sense to me. There was also a lot of performance issues that hopefully end up getting rectified when the full game releases. I think as far as a mech PVP game goes, this game was great. I'd love to see the exact same gameplay, but in a PVE co-op Gundam game. Instead, we've got just another hero shooter, good as it might be. So would this be something that I would recommend? Yeah, I, I think I could. But you do have to be into the whole PVP thing, and it would definitely be a lot better if you ended up having some friends to play it with. If the game has a campaign and you can do custom matches with bots, that would soften the blow a little bit. So this game's called Runes of Fortress and we're going to skip to the review portion. The idea of this game is really interesting in theory. It's basically a 2D battle royale, but the map was very, very small and combat wasn't complex enough to justify this game existing. I know that might sound harsh, but genuinely, if you give this game a shot, you'll see how clunky it is. Basically, for this demo, we were dropped into a very, very small map where the only real places that we could spawn was on the left side of the map or the right side of the map. From that point, we could slowly inch our way towards the center of the island, crafting up gear and even building bases, but it was all pointless. The second we would get spotted by an enemy, they would just dart towards us and there's not much we could do to defend ourselves. One thing that we did realize about halfway through our play session is if we ended up shooting off screen, it would usually kill the enemy without activating their AI. Long term, this game plans to be player versus player though. So I could see this becoming a problem where players would just fire blindly into the abyss, hoping that they hit someone. Again, it's a really cool concept, but I just don't think that I could recommend it. So here we got a game called The Exhausted Man, which I'm pretty sure is an allegory for my life. I'm expecting a hardcore cameo of myself in this game. If you guys don't know, it's kind of an in meme with uh, my Discord community because I will often have 12 hour sleeps when I'm really, really tired. So I can zoom in and out. I can crawl, oh, disgusting. Rotate the camera and I can take a nap. Oh, oh, I'm like a snake, you mean? I see. Ah, uh, yes. And it wants me to nap while falling. So I just did that. So I can use my hands now to like grab stuff. I see. So the game is actually very simple. You just have to complete all of the different objectives. So for this level, uh, items float. I did it. I grabbed the license. Oh, I guess I beat the game. <laughs> there we go. Now I've opened a few more levels. Art B.A.D. fell in love with video games when he was five years old. After quitting his job, Art B.A.D. 
Oh, is that supposed to be Blade? All right, so I have to move the game dev device, which is the monitor. Come here, baby. Come on. Here we go. Come on. There we go. Okay, and then it wants me to cover the game dev object. And then I gotta put the head on the pillow and then hold still. Okay, yeah, I, I'm starting to kind of get it. I mean, at least it's a stress-free game, not having like a time limit or anything. But it's, it's really slow. Ooh, add enemies. What is that even going to be? I can make my teddy bear an enemy. He's actually got a health bar. The little bug an enemy and the dragon an enemy. Okay, keep enemy. Oh my God. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. I don't like this game. I feel like the core concept is interesting, but the execution is just terrible. Your character snakes around the environment, which is funny, but every objective just involved me grabbing items and weaseling them around the level. As I would complete objectives, it would force me to put more items in the environment, which was just more opportunity for my character to get caught. It reminds me of Octodad, except it's not fun. I will say that the style is definitely there, but it looks a lot funner than it is. I would not recommend this game. Hey everybody, Scythe here, just saying thanks for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed. Smash like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the different YouTube buttons. I figured that for this outro, I could hit you guys with some improv. What would you get if, what, what would you do? What, what kind of, what kind of person do you,